This is Sports Rage Level 2. I am Gabriel Morency, Sports Grid Radio and Television Network. So the Sweet 16 resumes on Thursday. Griffin Murphy will step up and in straight from the Strip of Las Vegas, Nevada, in a couple of minutes with us. We'll get into the college uh, basketball. But Thursday's a big day. Major League Baseball starts uh, as well. So we've got afternoon action to to get you uh, to get you going on Thursday, going into the Sweet 16 college basketball games. But I will, and I, I'm not disagreeing with the Baltimore Oriole pick of McCannis about scoring some runs in this game. But Cam, I know you're a big underdog better when when it comes to baseball. But I'll just warn people, yeah, you know, laying like minus 200 and these big prices in a baseball game in the opening day is 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 dangerous right we saw it with the dodgers the dodgers are going to be a great team this year they went one and one in the first two games right i mean baseball it just sort of adds up you go six and four through ten you go 12 and this you just sort of keep on racking it up it's more about just winning the series than than winning these games and we've got uh some good pitching matchups to start the season uh peralta goes for the brew crew in queens against the mets this game is a near pick em right now at minus 110. And I don't know if this is the best idea to start the Major League Baseball season, Cam, with my first bet of the year. But I guess my first bet of the year is going to be on the Nye Metropolitans, my favorite baseball <laughs> squadron in the New York area. Thank you, Apu. Not my favorite yeah, squadron not... overall, but in the New York that's, area. I'm more of a Met guy best. than a Yankee guy. <laughs> that's the best. Nye Metropolitans, my favorite baseball squadron. My fa- favorite baseball squadron. <laughs> that's that's so Apu. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, you know, Apu rocks. I actually lean I lean Mets in that uh, in that game as well. Milwaukee's a team game. Quintana. I think uh, yeah, they're going to be a team that I think we're going to fade a lot this year. You're getting the Mets at home, pick them early and start in the season. The Mets will find a way to screw up eventually, but not not out of uh, opening day. I agree. I like uh, the Nine Metropolitans as well. Shout out to everybody joining us on Sirius XM Channel One Five Nine on the Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. I am Gabriel Renzi, Cam Stewart, and House Griffin Murphy is going to step up and in in a couple of minutes. We'll get to the Sweet 16. We're just taking a look right now at opening day that is less than 48 hours away right now. Major League Baseball Brew Crew are in New York to take on the Mets. The game is a pick em, minus 110 on both sides. Total is 7.5. A, a lot of 7.5s on the board. Spencer Strider goes for the Atlanta Braves. Braves minus 125 against Wheeler. And uh, Cam, these are the number one and number two candidates to win the Cy Young Award in the National League going head-to-head on opening day. Big-time pitching matchup there between the Braves and the Phillies. Although my my pick for Cy Young, and I think Strider would win, but if he, you know, he could get hurt, and he's only like plus 400 or so. Logan Webb, guys, I think is going to kill it this year good, with San Francisco. Phil. He's like mm-hmm. plus 1,200, very good odds. And my American League Cy Young pick is Kevin Gossman at plus 800 with the Toronto Blue Jays. So Sandoval goes for the Angels. Uh, Corbin Burns makes his debut for the Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore's minus 185. It's a little chalky, Cam, but hard not to like the Orioles in the opener. Yeah, you're right, Gabe. Baseball will get you into big trouble, and that's the thing. Like, we're, we're going to take favorites during the year. I try not to take them over, like, 50 cents and stuff like that. Well, here's one. Does add up. Yeah. So I was going to say, you want to lay minus 180 with the Detroit Tigers on the road in Chicago? <laughs> no, I don't. That's it insanity. will not be making my uh, – no, it really is. I like, know the White the Sox thing. are going to suck this year, but the Detroit Tigers should not be minus 180 road favorites. No, no you're right. Scoobles going to be a really good pitcher. I don't even know who this crochet guy is going crochet. <laughs> like, what is that? Like knitting for uh, the White Sox game? Like, they got some – they're they're. No, it's, it's that lawn cool. game. It's crochet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah, lawn yeah, pole. Yeah, yeah. Pish, pish. yeah. Yes, yes. So anyway, he's pitching for the White Sox. Yeah, croquet. I was That's good at cro- that, that when I was croquet. a kid. Yeah, me too. The is little it? ball and the hammer? Oh, yeah, I love croquet. Great game. But this pitcher doesn't sound Should be an smooth. Olympic sport. Yeah. You know what? I, I, we bet I guess on it was it. crochet uh, for me because I was in Quebec. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> cro- cro- crochet for all you uh, French players. <laughs> well, crochet. <laughs> A little crochet tournament? Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. Twins uh, and Royals. Google's Twins are minus game, 120. You know what? That's an interesting line. Like that, that that game feels like trap. You got Lopez on the mound, only laying twenty cents against Raggins and KC. We like KC to be a lot better, but I, I thought the Twins would be about a buck thirty-five there. That seems a little bit light. I'm gonna take the I'll take the Blue Jays on opening day. Barrios is the opening day starter. Plus one fifteen yeah. against Zach Eflin. Tampa Bay is a minus one thirty-five favorite. Yeah, I like. Come on, that. Tampa Barrios can't be good every year, bro. 
Yeah, uh, you know what, Gabe? Every time we might, every time we say the Rays can't do it, they do. But this is the year I think they actually fade. The Blue Jays. You brought up a great point in yesterday's show. Get out to a hot start. You got this team has always been. Yeah, start the season twelve and three type thing. Don't don't, like, don't, go, don't don't be six yeah. and six and so oh, we can turn it up yeah. and oh, it's okay. Like no no no, be intense from day one, like all the yeah. way through. You Just say you know what? Too. We're going to be like Baltimore last year. We're going to kick the crap out of everybody every day, and we're not going to let up. They, they need to put their foot on teams' throats. They're very complacent. They lose to bad teams, and that has to stop. Like, you need a you need a whole new attitude. Win series. Get it done. Take two out of three, two out of three, two out of three. Just come on, Blue Jays. Like, they have the talent to do it. It just really bothers me because they've been underachieving for so long. Gabe, this They're is a huge year for this organization. In game one. Yep, I'll be back. They're underdogs in game one, plus 115. We're all high on the Cincinnati Reds this year. The Reds are minus 150 favorites with uh, with Frankie Montas on the hill. Against Jonas Gray for the Nationals. Fair enough price. If we like the Reds, we'll bet the Reds in game one. Eovaldi goes for the defending World Series champion Rangers, who get no love at minus 115 favorites against the Cubs um, in, in, in that game. The Dodgers are minus 245 favorites. Tyler Glass now goes for the Dodgers. Uh, Michaelis goes for the Cardinals cam plus 200. That's a dangerous price right there to lay. It really is. I will not be laying that at all. I'm going to pass. That's no, you no put thanks. the Dodgers in parlays. You know what I'll do? I'll just play the Dodgers with UConn to win the national championship. I'll just that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I, told, I told you what you were talking about with the Carver, like the Scottish Scheffler Masters bungalow. You just keep on building and building and building, right? Make it a super parlay. I've got to um, 80-77 right now, Indiana State over Cincinnati with 27 seconds left in the basketball game. And uh, Cam brought up Fairfield earlier. Seattle is drilling Fairfield right now. 73-51 to 51 with four minutes left. I got the over 144 in this game. I'm not sure it's going to get there. They're at 124 right now with the 345 left. As far as the, uh, the Mavericks game is concerned, 58-53 Mavs at the half. Uh, right now, 58-53. So Griffin Murphy's going to step up and in in a couple of minutes and kick it with us. We'll get into the Sweet 16. We'll see what he thinks. We'll run the gauntlet. I'd like to take a look at the women's uh, March Madness updated uh, point spreads and numbers as well. The Montreal Canadiens hanging on to a 2-1 lead over the Colorado Avalanche right now. Let's ke- let's check in with Cam Scrap Heap special games of the night tonight. Yep. Blue Jackets up one nothing on the Coyotes. Hey. hey. Yep. Cracking up two nothing. Ooh, bad. Boo. And Boo. Dallas Stars up one nothing. And I got two and a half. So right now it's a three way. It's like one, one, and one. And I'm on the Canadians against the Avalanche. They're up two to one. If Montreal beats Colorado, that's upset city. They were monster dogs tonight, Gabe. I think plus three. Yeah, there's still fifteen minutes left in that game. In game total right now is five and a half. Canadians are minus one seventy. The Colorado Avalanche are plus one forty. Let's get into the sweet sixteen on the other side. This is sports rage. They have looked fantastic. That's not the team that I saw in the regular season. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone, and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my God. My God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. 
And oh, instead, we, they, they, got they, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. We got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a ref. In. They still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat UConn. You got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning... In game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back to back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In game live prime time. Back to back, just utterly stinker quarters. In game live overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen, watch right now. You may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. The Twisted Tuesday continues. This is Sports Rage. I'm Red, so we're kicking the camp. Stewart in the house. Sirius XM Channel 159 of the Sports Good Radio and Television Networks. And more shout out to all of our television affiliates and uh, smart TV platforms and apps. 58-53 for the Dallas Mavericks. They're now laying four and a half. It's 224 and a half right now at the break. And uh, meanwhile, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and in Indiana State are winning 82-77 Kareem. over Cincinnati with 12 Kareem. seconds. Uh, remaining. Seattle is just drilling Fairfield uh, tonight. I was wondering why they were laying seven. Now we find out why. Uh, they're winning 74 to 51 with under two minutes remaining in the CBI uh, right now. Let's uh, bring in Griffin Murphy right now. Straight for the strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. G. Murphy wins in the house. What's going on, Griffin? Good to see you, my man. How you doing? Gabe, I'm living the dream, brother. You know, we got March Madness rolling around. We're in the Sweet 16. We've got MLB, NBA playoffs around the corner, NHL. This is the mecca. This is time. I am jacked up. Couldn't be happier to be on the show with you and Cam. Thrilled, brother. Yeah, and March Madness is always a fun time uh, in Las Vegas all the way through uh, the tournament. So let's get right after it and jump into the Sweet 16 uh, right now. First game up on the board will be Clemson and Arizona. I got to tell you, I didn't think, Griffin, that the Clemson Tigers would be in the Sweet 16, but here they are right now. Dude, Gabe, this team is – this is my one team that if I'm going to pick one underdog to take it all, it's going to be Clemson. Why is Clemson getting seven and a half points against Arizona? I don't care what anybody says. If anybody watched what this team just did to Baylor, Baylor came out and they looked absolutely ridiculous. They couldn't hit their shots. They were badly coached. They didn't apply pressure on the defensive side when they needed to. They were off the entire game. P.J. Hall on the other side. That is the man to watch in the paint. He does not only drive two points, he's going to get you three. He's physical. He's energetic. When this guy comes to play, he comes to play. And that is what I love about this kid more than anything. Not only does he play basketball, but he loves to play basketball. He brings the fire. He brings the momentum to this team. And another guy that really does not get enough from, uh, noticeability is Gerard from the paint. When this kid carries it from the helm, he's fast. He's athletic. He'll take the he'll score you 12 points just laying it up, driving it down the hole himself. This Clemson team is playing real good basketball right now. And I love where they're sitting. And then their, you look at their Arizona, defense has been good too. Take a look at their last two nope. games, game 56, and they held Baylor in check. That total, I know it's a high total. Like Clemson's D has really stepped up, guys. They're playing good. Stepped up across the They're a very the well coached team. They are. 
it, it just took the words right out of my mouth. And then you look at Arizona, who they're losing to Oregon by 10. They lost to USC by double digits. And then they just beat Dayton by 10 points. I mean, if you expect to be the top team in this tournament, you better perform better than that. I like Clemson here, guys. I, I think Clemson takes this one, especially giving me that sweet seven and a half points. It's way too many in my eyes. That The market overpriced this one, guys. I think you look at Arizona and Arizona are going to want to run and they're, you know, they're going to think, all right, we're going to, we have more talent than Clemson. We're going to run. Let's play our game. I do like the over 152 here, but as you stated, man, Clemson can get after you defensively and Arizona are a little bit sloppy with the basketball, right? Mm-hmm. And they don't really play against the best defensive teams to begin with. And I think Clemson can slow it down on Arizona at times, get Arizona in a little bit of foul trouble, get to the free throw line. You know, Arizona are a flashy, sexy team, but Clemson are more meat and potatoes. I agree with you. I don't want to lay the seven, seven and a half uh, with Arizona here. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they survive this game, but in a game that's kind of a real pure toss up right now at this point, I do think it goes over to 152, though. Uh, here, I don't okay. know how you feel about this, Cam, but I, well, the first thing I looked at, I was like, yeah, I'm betting he over 152 uh, in yeah. this game. But I do think Clemson are a live dog. I agree. And I think, you know, uh, Griff might be on to something there. They're plus 260 on the money line. You know what it is, Gabe? The 152 and a half. The, the, the reason I like Clemson because they've been playing better defense, but Arizona gives up a lot of, a lot of points. They're a sloppy team. So I think Clemson be, will be able to score to help your total. So, yeah. I'm definitely taking the dog in this spot with like Griffin. I think I think they can win outright. This game is in Los Angeles. Um, it's in it's in Los Angeles at the uh, at the crypt, uh, for the record. All right, so now we've got um, San Diego State mm-hmm. and uh, UConn, a rematch of last year, yeah. and I kind of feel bad. Um, I gotta feel bad actually for for San Diego State Griffin. They got to get UConn again. And like right. this early in the tournament, not like maybe in the final four, the championship game again for a rematch. I get it. You know, people are going to argue that San Diego State are better this year or they're better offensively. But all right, they got smoke. What was it off the top of my head? What was it 79 54 last time? Like, how much are they? Mm-hmm. Can they really close the gap? And UConn are just covering machines, man. Last year, UConn yeah. went 6 and 0 straight up and against the spread in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Hurley kind of judges his success by the point spread. Like, he expects to cover and win convincingly. He's not happy with winning by four or six. That's the thing when you play UConn. They're relentless, these dudes, right, for 40 minutes. I think San Diego State are in a lot of trouble once again. I'd rather have Clemson plus the points than SDSU. You see, Gabe, I'm a little bit on the other side with this game, coming into the fact that, let's grant it, okay, UConn, they did it last year. They've won nine games in a row, and they have annihilated just about everybody they played this far. But the cons are San Diego State, as you mentioned, they're looking for blood, man. This is a redemption game, and you've got to key out one physical player, and that's where this game's going to come down to, physicality. Jaden Ledee, this guy in the paint is an absolute savage warrior. He is a playmaker. He will get you those two, three points inside of the paint. He's a monster. He goes deep in the hole. He's able to swing the ball out and find his key playmakers. This game for San Diego State, if they want to have any sort of chance inside of this game, is going to be on the defensive side. They have to keep this game in the first half sustainable. They can't go into this game going into the second half down 15 points, down 10 points. They have to play physical defense, and that is where I rely on Jaden Ledee. That is their all-time playmaker in my eyes. That is one of the most physical, toughest guys in this game. We know UConn's going to come out balling. We know they're going to be shooting. They attack the ball. They move at a fast pace, and they crash at the boards. So San Diego State is going to have to play prime defense, and they're going to have to out-rebound UConn, uh, out-rebound UConn early and often to stay in this game, Gabe. You know, they want to keep it in the 60s, you know, with, without a doubt. And I don't know if that's their puncher's chance to cover the point spread here. But I think that San Diego State will hang around for a while, Cam, but UConn will just eventually pull away as the game goes on. But I've got I UConn agree. winning the title. So, like, so I'm all in on UConn, but sure. I'm not losing sleep over facing San Diego State here, like, as far as my UConn future is concerned. 
It's the lowest total. Actually, Duke Houston's 133 and a half. This is 134 and a half, guys. I got to tell you, I don't know how, how uh, San Diego State's going to score points on UConn. That's, it's going to be an issue because UConn can still play D, and San Diego State's pretty good defensively. Gabe, it's a low total, but I lean under 135 and a half as well. I like that one, Cam. I like that one for sure. San Diego State's top 35 defense in the nation. I, I, I agree with that one. I like that under. I think it'll be right around the number. It should be noted, this game's in Boston, too, mm. which, just for the record, is kind of close to UConn and not very close to San Diego State. Yeah, very far <laughs> right. from San Diego State. I'm more UConn fan. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's you a UConn home home game, right? That's Hartford, UConn. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. But double You're digits, in New England now. Double digits is a lot. It's a lot. It is. It is. It is. That back door will be open. That back door will be open, but the hook. I still, like, you know what I mean? I'm not locked in yet. We're kicking the tires on this right now. But I'm thinking UConn by 13, 14, 15 type of deal. I think they're just going to systematically march through. You know, and this, they're just not a team I want to get in front of. And as I stated, last year, guys, they covered every game that they played in the tournament. All right, which not a lot of teams have done, actually, over the history. They went 6-0 and straight up in ATS. Yeah, now they're two and zero straight up ATS. So they're they're, they're yep. covering their last eight turning games. I'm not getting in front of that. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Locked On Podcast then they go into the NCAAs and they put up a bucket load of points. They have looked fantastic. That's not the team that I saw in the regular season. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25 year old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell coast to coast only on sports grid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my, God. my God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. And oh, instead, we, we, we got we, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. Got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a ref. In, they still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat UConn. you got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen and watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid.
This is Sports Rage. The Twisted Tuesday continues. I am Gabriel Renzi. Quick check of the scoreboard uh, right now. The uh, Mavericks are up 73-61 on the Kings. They're laying 8.5 right now. In-game total, 231.5. We're on Dallas in the over, so we like this. Uh, NHL hockey, 2-1 Canadians with six minutes left. 3 nothing Kraken with uh, six minutes left in the second period. Columbus are up 1-0 on the Arizona Coyotes. Seven minutes left in the second period of play. The Dallas Stars have now taken a 2-0 lead on the San Jose Sharks. The Collar Titans for Cam Stewart and the Sharks. <laughs> it's real tight. Brutal. The Collar Titans. I'm, I'm, uh, man, 2-0 after one period. Oh, they're done. Dallas will they're take good. the pedal off the metal. That's what you got to hope. And I'm going to jump in right. on the under six and a half here now. And Dallas Dude, wins you... this game like four nothing or something. You know what? Sorry, if we can get if we can get the Sharks. At three He's on and Dallas half plus two and, and a half. half. Sharks plus two. Yeah, and yeah, half. Yeah. <laughs> if, we get, if we get SJ Sharky at three and a half or four and a half, I might have to uh, bite again. But yeah, you're right. That's two and a half. Very, yeah, very scary. <laughs> very they're scary plus three right. and a half right now. You know what? I'm in three and a half. Down two nothing. Plus three and a half. That's so dangerous. They're so four bad. nothing has a ring to it, Griff. I just played it under six and a half. I'm like, yeah, it feels like it's a four nothing game. Dallas will score another two, two and a half then they'll Dallas. be like, ah, we're we're good going into the third. Don't yeah. worry about it. You're right. Brutal, man. San Jose. What, uh, what have they lost seven in a row now? One seven yeah. and two in their last ten something. Brutal. Cam's a masochist. So he likes to uh, bet yeah. on bad teams. I love pain. Yeah, might as well like have a like a gimp ball in my mouth and just take abuse. I'm getting <laughs> dominant. My dominatrix is like, oh, why just at the shark? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you got to pull the trigger, no. Cam. I'm on your side though, Cam. Let's just end the game two nothing. I'll be happy. Yeah. Any game like oh, this, two nothing final oh. score. Boom. I then we're we're partying. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it. All right. So Alabama. So it sounds like Griffin. Either the, the, Griffin likes the underdogs. Uh, like Clemson the plus the points. That's SDSU uh, mm-hmm. plus eleven right now, which leads us into North Carolina and Alabama. Yeah. The Tar Heels are laying four to the Crimson Tide, one seventy three and a half. And I swear, Griffin, I always tell people this. Coming into the tournament, Clemson's a good example of it. Alabama's a good example of it. Illinois is a good example of it. Yeah. In which um, people are always talking about these sleepers and stuff. And everybody wants to be cute and sound like oh, they're so smart. And, oh, McNeese State this. And I've watched. Yeah. I didn't never watch them all year, but they're the team that's going to go deep. Right? Yeah. Sure. The real sleepers that really generally do well in the NCAA tournament are Power 5 conference, big-time programs that sort of had average years. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're the real I mean, sleepers. The the ones that sort of underachieve, like Alabama is a good example, right? Alabama had aspirations coming into the year thick, and we're one of the best teams in the country. We can play with anybody. Kind of got away from them a little bit this year. Now here they are, kind of reminded, oh, yeah, by the way, when we play well, we can beat anybody. Here they are right now. Clemson, a yeah. little bit different, just sort of always knocking on the door. NC State, another one. Just sort of got hot at the right time, you know what I mean? An ACC mm-hmm. uh, team, but it's the bigger programs that underachieve in a regular season. They're the teams that keep her eye on before the March Madness tournament. Not these like schools nobody's ever heard of. And I'm not going to disagree at all with you, Gabe, especially the way that Alabama kind of started their season. At one point, they were nearly playing 500 basketball. I want to say maybe 10, 15 games in. And I remember directly because I had a massive wager on on them against LSU. They were laying 14 and a half points. From that point, that was the turning point in Alabama's season. The problem is, well, Gabe, they've got to deal with North Carolina. They are 9-1 and in their last 10 games. They just absolutely rolled over Michigan State, blew them out of the water completely. North Carolina is coached by a phenomenal Hubert Davis. He's a monster. And here's the thing with North Carolina. Against the spread when it comes to ranked opponents, 6-2. and two. With rest advantage, they played Saturday. Bama played Sunday. 8-3 and three against the spread. And as a favor this season, their land points in this game, 19-14 and 14 against the spread this season. They've got Armando in the paint. He's a 240-load beast. And then you've got R.J. Davis who is one of the best players in the tournament in my eyes right now. His pull-up from the perimeter is absolutely ridiculous. The guy's got wheels down the court. And the best thing that I love about this North Carolina team is they crash the boards. When the shot is taken, everybody crashes. They go for rebounds. And that is why they are so premium on the offensive side. They are a great team when it comes to second chances. Then you roll back over to Alabama. Here's the problem with them. 
They're not that great on the road. This is a neutral site matchup. Three and five against the spread again at neutral sites. And a brutal, get this, against ranked opponents, two and seven against the spread against ranked opponents this season. Bama's had a really good run this season. I'm not going to take anything from them. And they've made me a lot of money because they've been kind of one of those teams that all season long, the books, the market, doesn't really necessarily know how to price them. Is this team legit? Are they the crappy start? Are they the mid-tier? Or are they going to come out and fall? Well, Throughout this entire season right now where I'm sitting, North Carolina's proven it to me. They've done it game in, game out. They've rolled over who they've had to beat. They've beaten ranked opponents and legitimate ones. Bama on the other side, they really just haven't proven themselves to me as a top contender right now. Can they be one of those upset teams, one of those dogs? Possibly. But I'm with North Carolina on this one, Cam. I'm with you guys. I'm I'm with you. I like North Carolina here. I was going to ask you too, Gabe. I know we have UConn Futures. And I got them at a good price. What do you think about North Carolina? Where are they now? 13 to 1? That's a pretty damn good price for that program, don't you think? I, it's good. I've, got, I've got a $10,000 like parlay. Well, I didn't put 10000 on. I'll win $10,000 if Tennessee, North Carolina, Houston, UConn is the final four. So I've got North Carolina mm-hmm. making it to the final four. Yeah. And we'll see. Maybe I'll hedge if I get into the weekend and I'll, you know, if I'm not feeling one of the teams. One thing yeah. with Alabama is. We know they're really good. They lit it up. They couldn't miss. But if you look at the two teams that they played, and no disrespect to College of Charleston and Grand Canyon, yeah, exactly. but Alabama mm-hmm. could Alabama could not have gotten a better path to get here. And a big we all know about Alabama as well. They're defensively flawed, and North Carolina, Alabama liked to outscore you, right? They're like, we're better than you. We're going to hit more threes. You are more athletic than you. All right. right, you're not more athletic and better than North Carolina. They have guys that are going to score on you. So if North, let's you know, North, they both have great offenses, and North Carolina can play defense. Griff, it's yeah. kind of a yeah. difference maker here, right? And like you said, North Carolina rebound. North Carolina play defense. North Carolina will challenge the three point line more. North Carolina is going to score on coach. Alabama. Bad, bad, bad matchup for Bama here. They're going to go down to North Carolina. What about the total? Agreed. What do you guys think? I know it's high, but it's going to be a track meet, isn't it? What do you think? No, I think the under. Ah. And I'm you an like over better, is, but I think yeah, the you under. Because yeah, North. That's, wow, that's interesting. Well, North Carolina, North Carolina is going to dictate. North Carolina is the better team, and I think North Carolina yeah. is going to be the ones who going to want to play in half court. Right? Yeah. Alabama is going to be the ones who want to push it, but North Carolina will be the better team and dictate the tempo. I think, Griff. Yep. I, I have a strong position on this one, guys, and I faded the total in this one. I have a strong position with North Carolina on this one. So I, I faded the total, didn't even break it down as deep as I needed to. I already knew who I was going with in this one, and that's North Carolina, gentlemen. This game also is in uh, Los Angeles uh, at the Crypt, which leads us into Illinois and Iowa State. And This total is not 173 and a half, but it's still, it's still <laughs> pretty chunky. Um, this game's yep. in Boston. Illinois, to me, too, Illinois might be the most underrated team. That they are, yeah. They're a really dangerous team right now that people aren't really talking about in the big picture. That I think this is it for Iowa State. I think Iowa State sort of bullied their way here, and God sure. bless them for doing it, but I think they kind of peaked uh, when they beat Houston in, in a championship game. And with them as well, they got um, – you know, they got pretty favorable matchups coming into this. Yeah, they beat Wazoo, good for them. They beat uh, South Dakota State uh, right mm-hmm. in, in the NCAA tournament game. I think this is a massive step up in class. And Illinois, Griffin, they have the size. Then Illinois, those kids are tough on Illinois. We're t- you know what I mean? They're, they're like a street ball team. They're very energetic. They get fired up. Iowa State won't be able to bully them and out outstreet them like Iowa State likes to do. And Gabe, I, I love that you said that because that's exactly where my breakdown in my mind goes into this game is the fact that Illinois is so much more physical. They are bigger than them. Let's not take anything away from Iowa State's defense. They have a v- top five defense in the nation and they are going to perform. But they're outsized. They're outmatched. And going at Illinois right now, they're getting points in this game. Nine and one in their last 10 games, won six consecutive matchups. Their most recent loss came to Purdue. Why did they lose that game? One guy, Zach Heady. 
He was an absolute stud, and that was the biggest problem. Illinois was not able to stop the seven foot four, three hundred pound load. Well, Iowa State does not have that. If you want to talk about offensive awareness, Domask with Illinois, this kid is one of the biggest swagged out ballers I have ever seen. This kid's jump shot fadeaway is going to be deadly in this game. For for Iowa State. I think they're going to have a lot of trouble because they also don't uh, keep up when it comes to pace of play. Illinois likes to move very fast. Iowa State likes to keep a slow, controlled tempo. They like to swing the ball around the perimeter. They like to hit their shots. They like to play sound defense man-to-man. And that is not Illinois' gameplay. Illinois' gameplay is attack the ball, attack the ball, because we know we're going to beat you with our physicality, and we know we're going to beat you on rebounds. So Iowa State, I'll give it to them. They had that fluky win where they blew up Houston. This is more. These things happen. So, you know what, guys? I like Illinois taking them straight up on the money line. The thing with Illinois is, too, guys, they're so unselfish. They've got numerous mm-hmm. dudes, right? they got guys who score 12 points, 9 points, 15 points. They, don't they'll they pass the my ball guy. in the paint. Yeah, they'll pass the ball in the paint as well. They don't force bad shots. He's another one, uh, Underwood. He's another coach. The guy's been around. No one yeah. ever really talks about him here. Like, they're kind of a sleeping giant. And they put up a bucket load of points. They have looked fantastic. That's not the team that I saw in the regular season. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone. And you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my God. My God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. And oh, instead, we, we, we got we, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. Got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a rep. In, they still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat UConn. you got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is you're either winning or you're rebuilding. In-game live all access. Nobody has been more profitable as a dog than Shaka Smart team. Winning back-to-back road games. I, I don't care if they're playing Topeka High. I, I wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever. In-game live. Prime time. Back-to-back just utterly stinker quarters. In-game live. Overtime. Honestly, as, as you sit here and listen watch right now, you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. (laughs) 
Sports Rage continues. I am Gable Morancy, Series XM Channel 159 of the Sports Grid Radio and Television Networks. The Dallas Mavericks are drilling the Sacramento Kings, 89-69. They're laying 17 and a half right now. In-game total is 229 and a half. We were on the right side with the Mavericks. Uh, we'll see. I got I have 231 and a half, actually. So we'll see if it gets there. But Sacktown might tap out. Griffin Murphy kicking with us. Cam Stewart in the house. We're talking Sweet 16 right now. Though Griff is in Chicago. He's in the Windy City. Getting ready yes, for sir. the White Sox opener, not That's the Cubs. Cool. I like it, but the White Sox <laughs> hosting the Detroit Tigers. I brought it up earlier. Man, the Tigers, I get it. School Bowl is a dark horse for Cy Young and all this, but minus 180 with the Tigers in a season opener. Mm-hmm. Home teams historically will play well at home in Major League Baseball. It's like Hope Springs Eternal. We know we're going to suck, but, you know, it's the only game that's going to be sold out all year or there'll be fans at type of thing, right? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm just throwing it out there. The White Sox are plus 150 underdogs in that game. I, You know, Gabe, that, that's a game for me where – uh, we got Garrett Crochet starting. This guy's been our bullpen pitcher for, for two years now. And I got to say, he's a good pitcher. The, the dude comes out. He's a big dude. He chucks hard from the left side. But opening up with him to start the season, I'm not so sure where we were going with that. Now, on the other hand, Scooble, this kid is an absolute stud. If I'm looking for any value in this game, it's going to be Detroit first five innings. Attack that. That, Der- Tarek Skubal is my absolute guy with that. He does not give up more than one run in his first five innings. Last season, his numbers were outstanding. The White Sox this season, I don't know where we're going to go. Is Eloy Jimenez going to stay healthy all season? I liked the move on Nicky Lopez, but there's not a lot of positivity that I can really talk about going into this season. I mean, we dumped off Tim Anderson, and now we've got uh, DeJong backing him up at shortstop. Moncada at third base. How is he going to play? Looking at this game right now, plus 180 Detroit opening day. Give me Detroit with Scooble on the bump. I mean, he's a, he's a stud, man. Crosses from the left side. His breaking ball and his changeup, absolutely outstanding. I think, you're, you know, strikeout props, your first five is, is a good look there. But it, without a doubt, listen, the White Sox, they're the worst team in the division. Kansas City's going in the right direction. They're starting to spend some money right now. Twins are still good. Cleveland just find a way to be okay all the time. And mm-hmm. then you got Detroit, who Detroit are supposed to be sort of turning the corner every year for the last couple of years. We'll see if they this is the year. No, they the young? That guy hit 29 with the Blue Jays. Enjoy him, Griff. The guy's the worst player in baseball. He sucks. <laughs> all the young. <laughs> I know, the Jays man. Picked him up. No, he literally gave. I think he, hit, I think he hit 29. Like, he was like one for 30. I'm like, who is this guy? He's awful. Like you can you can have him. <laughs> He's so gross. I, I don't know what the game plan was there, boys. I don't I know what the game plan here. was. Yeah, watch I don't think Reinsdorf has one, but that's besides the point, right? It's uh, <laughs> no, like a new stadium's his game no plan. plan. A new stadium. No that's that's yeah. that's his game plan. Yes. Um, <laughs> a- NC State and Marquette on Friday. They're the first ones up. Another upstart team here in the NC State Wolfpack. Where, you know, it's sort of like Clemson. It's like one of these teams was like, well, do I really want to get in front of them? They're hard to. Are they really going to be able to pull this off again? But I'm not. I know, listen, man, when Tyler Kolick is healthy, Marquette are a completely different team. I get it. But at the same point in time, I don't think Marquette, like I took Colorado plus the points against Marquette and I cashed. It was close, but I mm-hmm. cashed, Griff. And I don't think Marquette are the type of team that can blow anybody out, to be honest. I think they're they they play in close games. They play in close games all year, and I think NC State can play with Marquette actually. Well, well, that's the thing, Gabe, and I don't want to give too much information on this one because I have a very strong position uh, over with Doc Sports on this play. But I will say, NC State is not one of those teams that they're just going to string and get rolled over on. NC State, no matter who they're playing, whether it's Houston, whether it's Baylor, you name it, they're going to make this game a tight game always. And Marquette on the other side, they're not a team that necessarily blows anybody out by any means. And throughout the entire course of the season, Marquette has kind of been in one of those weird little trends, like they'll win three games and then they'll lose to a crappy team. 
They'll win three games. They'll lose to a crappy team. They're very weird. The thing that I like about them is they've been in this atmosphere before. They were here last season, so they have a little bit of that mojo rolling into this. Is Marquette the better team? Yes, but playing better right now? NC State's playing much better basketball right now, and the strength of schedule for NC State has been a lot tougher, and they're taking advantage of it right now. Marquette has not had a tough schedule, so looking at this game, I don't want to give too much off of this, but I lean NC State in this one, guys. I think, you know, NC State can score as well. This is going to be a fun game. This game is going to be uh, going over the number. Foul uh, and how the refs are going to call, it's going to be important. But I think we can get there at 151 and a half. Gonzaga and Purdue, here's another yeah. team where sort of people all year, well, it's not the same Purdue team as, uh, or uh, you know, Purdue or Chokers and Gonzaga aren't the same. They're not as good as they used to be. And Gonzaga were all over the place, right? I mean, they went into St. Mary's. <laughs> And they ended St. Mary's perfect conference season on the last side of the night of the regular season. Mm-hmm. And then St. Mary's punches in the in, back in the mouth after, right, in Vegas. Yep. At the game I think you were at, actually, with Tony I George. I was there. Yeah, yeah. I was there. So, right, you know, and then people really didn't know what to expect from Gonzaga. But, you know, they got extremely hot. All their shots fell. How do you think they match up? You've seen this team live recently. How do you think they match up against the Purdue Boilermakers and Zach Eady? Well, unfortunately, the game that I got to watch them play, they couldn't have uh, hit a backboard with a, a, a brick if they tried to. They were they played so bad against St. Mary's, and I had Zaga rolling into that game. I'm not impressed with them by any means. The, and the thing coming into this game is the strength of schedule is going to be a shell shocker. They haven't dealt with anybody good. They played San Francisco twice, which San Francisco's good. Let's not take anything from them, but they're not dominant. They're not one of those teams. They played St. Mary's, McNeese State, and then Kansas. And Kansas has been on a debacle all season long. I don't know what happened to this team playing on the road whatsoever. Gonzaga is a team, their guards play absolutely brutal. They better step up on the defensive side. And then, once again, you've got to deal with Purdue. Zach Heedy, he's seven foot four in the paint. This guy drives and carries the load. But that's not just it. You have to remember... Zach Eady closes the gap. He closed the floor. But you cannot forget or disregard their playmaker with Braden Smith. This kid is a baller. He is a perimeter shooter. He's the fastest kid on the court. So when Heady bl- blanks everybody up in the paint, well, guess what? You got Braden running around the court, popping threes from the perimeter. Strength of schedule is going to be a massive impact for Gonzaga rolling into this game. I think the market underpriced Purdue in this game. I think Purdue's going to roll over them. I don't think Zaga knows what hit him. When I went to that St. Mary's game and I watched that St. Mary's big man versus Zaga's big man, it wasn't even close. St. Mary's made them look stupid, and the final score of the outcome resulted it and showed it for itself. I don't. I, I'm with Purdue here. I think they get underpriced this game. Cam, what do you think about Gonzaga and Purdue? What are you going to be doing uh, with this one from Little Caesars yeah. Arena? Eileen Purdue. I think this is the year that Painter gets the monkey off his back. This team is starting to feel it. They look like a team on a mission. Gonzaga's been good. I I, I agree. I think this is a team. I think Purdue can win this game by like. 10 to 12 points. I think the spread's a little bit low. Uh, yeah, I lean Purdue, Gabe. I think uh, they're a much better team than Gonzaga. Five and a half seems like a, a good price. They're going to, ha- listen, Gonzaga are going to have to hope that their three point shots are falling. Yeah. Right. I mean, that, cool. that, that's all that's of this. Is, I, yeah. This is point blank, Griff, right? Like for Gonzaga. Because if they're not, they're in a lot of trouble. They're going to be yeah, in a yeah. lot of trouble. They're going to get in a foul it trouble dealing with Edie on the inside. Purdue can push the pace, too. That's another thing, too. Like, even though Purdue's Brady best Smith. player is a big man, they can play fast. They can play at a quick tempo. They can put points up on the board. It's going to be a problem for Gonzaga here. I agree, too. As as well as Purdue has played, five and a half is a fair number, right? I mean, yeah. people just expect them to choke all the time. That's why. Mm-hmm. Like, point blank. People just think, oh, they're going to choke. They're going to choke. They're going to choke. Which leads us into uh, Duke and Houston. So Houston got all that they can handle against AM. They took the pedal off the metal late, which was somewhat of a surprise, right? They had the lead. They take yeah. the pedal off the metal. Then they got sloppy with a second left. It was weird coming out of the timeout. Somehow somebody was that open at the top of the key. I think it shocked them. That was the dude that took the shot, but they survived. And they did the same thing against Baylor earlier in the year. 
where they blew yep. a lead late. And a lot of times teams will blow a lead late, especially in college. And, it'll, you know, emotionally they can't handle flipping the switch and just saying, all right, let's just win now again. Houston can. I like the fact that Houston are so battle-tested. I've got Houston finding a way and getting to the national championship game. The only team I think that really is in front of them is um, is Purdue because they've got to get through. You know, they're on the same side. They're going to have to go through Purdue yeah. to get there. I got Tennessee as well, but I got Houston beating Duke. And here's an interesting stat, too, guys. We talked about it last night. The Duke Blue Devils 0-5 the last five times they played in the NCAA tournament against a team that's a higher seed than them. So that they don't win as an underdog. The last oh. time they have is 1994. Wow. Wow. Well, I'll go right into this. I mean, I'll t- well, let's talk a little bit about Houston's defense. That is the best defense. You know what? I want to backtrack, Gabe. You're talking about that real early game when they played Baylor, and that game went into an overtime. I think it was a double overtime game when uh, yeah. when Houston played. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was the game I thought that you were talking about. Anyways, Houston, I, 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 Houston hit a shot like with two seconds left. To, they thought they yeah. were going to win. Then Baylor hit a shot to send it to overtime. And it was at Baylor. The arena was going crazy and stuff. And Houston just kicked the crap out of them in the five-minute session after. So, like, it goes to show their mental toughness. Exactly. They bring the heat. And that is what I love about them, the intensity. They have the best defense in the nation. And truthfully, it's not even close. And they have a phenomenal head coach with Kelvin Sampson. I mean, he's been here so many times before. So, it's not like this is new news to him. LJ Cryer. At the helm, absolute stud, dude. Runs around the court like a madman. He bangs from the perimeter. He knows how to swing the ball re- uh, well. And then you look at Duke. Here's the problem for Duke right now. They are the best team, not literally, but they are a top five team in the country when it comes to playing at home. Well, we've got a neutral site on our hand. On the road this season, and we can stack this as a confluence because this is a neutral site, seven and four on the road this season against this. Or seven Wait, let me just throw in there. The neutral yeah, site yeah, happens ahead. to be Dallas, Texas, as well. Mm, okay. Yeah. In Dallas. That's the problem. Seven, seven and four on the road. They've been an underdog just twice this season, 0 and 2 against the spread. As an away team, 5 5 and 1 against the spread this season. And against ranked opponents, 2 and 3 against the spread. They're playing Houston with the best basketball or the best defense in all of basketball. How do you expect them to come in and roll with them? Prior to this, they dealt with James Madison. They have not scored over 80 points on the offensive side in their last five games. In three of those games, we're at neutral sites. Give me Houston. Lay the points. I think they roll over them. Cam, how do you feel about the Houston Cougars, who I have going to the title game? You guys are selling me on Houston. I was actually thinking about taking Duke, but you're making a, a, a lot of good points. Good point, too, Gabe, at the games in Texas. It's bad news for Duke. Duke played well, but you're right. The level of competition was very, very weak. JMU was everybody's one of the trendy teams like McNeese State. They got thrown. Right. This, this is a step up in class, Marenzi. I, I'm worried, though. Duke is playing very good basketball, but Houston might pull away at the end and, you know, cover with free throws. I think it's going to be a very tight game. You have a bunch of whiny white dudes against, like, the best defensive team in the country. How do you think this is going to end? I don't like the fact that they Houston play wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want That's my breakdown. A bunch of whiny white dudes. Yeah. All those people that had all that extra time because of those COVID seasons is going to be gone, and you're not going to really have the 23, 24, 25-year-old basketball players running around anymore. You're not going to have it. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on SportsGrid.
The Bostonian versus the book. The books have so much information. Now, the, the gamblers do as well, but it's coming down to sometimes coaching, sometimes, you know, a, a good play, a good call. I mean, the block last night that was a block, it was called a foul. Oh, oh my God. My God. That was Dude, all We would ball. see that highlight forever. Yes. And instead, oh, we, we, we got we, robbed. We'll, we'll never see it again. We got, got robbed by a referee making, you know, that's a ref. They in, still covered, though. They did. They did cover. The Bostonian versus the book. I think JMU is going to knock off Wisconsin. I think JMU, with the way that they can score the ball and spread you out, Wisconsin struggles to defend. They're in the bottom third in defensive efficiency. Iowa State's not going to beat you with offense necessarily. They're just they're just not. Illinois will beat you with offense. I like Illinois. I don't love them enough to beat UConn. you got to guard at some point. Give me Connecticut to make the Final Four. Betting above the rim only on Sports Grid. Sports Grid. Your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro League Soccer, powered by Marca. I would be willing to bet the under two and a half goals. Fantasy Sports Today. Especially in head-to-head formats in fantasy, I think I'm going to go with Juan Soto. Game Time Decisions. People don't like it. I don't really care. I cannot believe anybody is betting the Clippers at this number. Betting above the rim. All you've heard me say on the network is, you're either winning in game live all access nobody has been more profitable as a dog than shaka smart team winning back to back road games I, I don't care if they're playing topeka high i i wouldn't give them any chance whatsoever in game live prime time back to back just utterly stinker quarters in game live overtime honestly as, as you sit here and listen watch right now you may want to consider uh, placing that bet. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. This is Sports Rage. I'm Ranci. We're kicking it just a couple of minutes with Cam and uh, Griffin uh, Murphy. Level three coming up. We've got a lot of stuff to get to at level three as well. I'm looking at this right now, and I want to get the odds up for the game to go to overtime. Uh, tied at the end of regulation, whatever it is. Let's see if I can find it. They don't have it posted uh, yet right now. But I got to tell you guys, if there's one game, Griffin, I think that could, that's going to come down to the last shot, last second, go to overtime. Double overtime will be Creighton and Tennessee. This game has sweat job stress, roller coaster drama written all over it. I got yep. Tennessee going to the final four, and I'm not really even in love with them. I just sort of filled out a bracket and like their path there. And when, listen, Tennessee, the difference is with Tennessee now, they've got a go to score now, right? They've yep. got a kid that can give you 20 plus, which, mm-hmm. you know, in the past, they've always been athletic and defensive and scrappy, but they've, They've had those lulls where they can't score. Tennessee are lethal at both ends of the court. They have size. They can play defense. And yeah, Creighton uh, Creighton can beat anybody in the country as well. This is a great game. Yeah, a- a- absolutely, Gabe. You know, this is one of the games that throughout every game that I circled, this one was just I, – I-, I was ziggling my finger around who, who I'm going to take here. And the reason being, this is going to be such a tight game. Tennessee is playing real good basketball right now. This is the teaser game, guys. Just take Creighton plus eight on a teaser. Yes, I I, 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 (laughs) Basketball (laughs) teasers, we're back. Here we go. I haven't done one, but this is the one. This is sort of you look like, oh, yeah, give me eight points, like a five-point teaser, eight points with Creighton. You're right. You're right. That's, I, when you, I, I like you take that. teasers in games that everyone's betting these games. That's when you take teasers. You don't take them in a college football game. No, you take them mm-hmm. in games that the lines are sharp like this. Marincy. It actually makes sense. This game's going to be tight. I got the Vols yeah. surviving, but I'm just throwing a dart in your riff. I'm just hoping. Oh, no, no. I hear you, brother. I hear you, man. See, my thing, I have an emotional attachment with Tennessee. They've done me very good for all season long against the spread and on the money line. They're that minus 200. You could cook them up in a parlay, whatever. But they've had some rough losses this season. They've lost Kentucky, Mississippi State, and Texas. They have a solid offense. We'll get back to it. 